We all know what it's like to see something and have our breath taken away by the sheer beauty of it. All of us have different ideas of what's amazing or beautiful, but there are some places in the world that are so beautiful and amazing that they appeal to everyone. Many of the world's ancient and modern wonders belong to that category of locations, but there are also lesser known places to seek out and explore too. We can't think of a better place to start than Fred Smith's Wisconsin Concrete Park, which is as strange and enchanting a sight as you'll ever see. Back in his teenage years, Fred Smith was a lumberjack, but poor health forced him to retire in 1948. Seeking something to do with his spare time, he started making sculptures out of concrete and broken shards of beer bottles. His new hobby quickly turned into an obsession, and by 1964, the land outside his home was populated by no fewer than 237 of the most curious-looking statues, which he apparently intended to be viewed as a celebration of American folklore. You'll find miners, cowboys, Native Americans, soldiers, and even a few woodland creatures. In one corner, Ben-Hur comes face to face with Sacagawea. In another, a female statue called Mabel milks a cow. Even Fred isn't sure why he started or carried on as long as he did, but after he passed away in 1976, he left his work and property to the Kohler Foundation, who turned it into a free country park open to anybody who wishes to visit it. You'll have to do a little driving to find our next amazing site, but it's worth the effort. Shipwrecks are popular attractions for divers all over the world and you won't find more of them anywhere on the planet than there are in the American Great Lakes. There are thought to be 8,000 individual wrecks there, of which 2,000 can be found in Lake Erie alone. If that estimate is accurate, that means there are a lot more wrecks to be found. Thus far, only about 400 of the wrecks have been located and identified, all of which have been perfectly preserved by the cold, fresh water at the bottom of the lake. Among them are fishing boats, steamships, schooners, and freighters. One of them is the Republic, a huge 130-foot-long vessel from Clayton, New York, that went down in bad weather close to Lorraine in 1895. The best vantage point for spotting a few wrecks can be found on Lake Erie's eastern section, where the water's so clear you can see 100 feet below the surface with the naked eye. Should Pierre Cardin's bubble house in Thule-sur-Mer, France truly be called a house? Or should it be more accurately referred to as an outdoor art installation? We'll let you be the judge of that, but it's definitely worth seeing no matter how you classify it. Cardin, one of France's most celebrated fashion designers, decided to build his own perfect summer home a little over 30 years ago, and he went about the task with his usual exuberance. He acquired a home that had been part built by architect Aniti Lovag a few years earlier for a client who'd passed away and took it off Lovag's hands to finish the work himself. We've heard the domed structure compared to a few other things, including submarines, squid legs, and space grapes. For many years, Cardin opened up his home to exhibit his latest fashion collections, but as he's a little older now, invitations to the public are few and far between. Unless you're lucky enough to get to know him personally, photographs like these are likely to be as close as you'll ever get. When you catch your first glimpse of the Dragon's Eye Stone Mine in Lancashire, England, your first thought is likely to be that it must be a movie set. Perhaps the latest Hobbit or Lord of the Rings movie was filmed here. Or maybe it's been earmarked for the next installment of the long-running Indiana Jones series. Actually, it's nothing of the sort. The unique appearance of this mine has come about by accident rather than design. This location was originally known as the Hall of Giants Stone Mine, itself an impressive name, but gained its even more impressive nickname when the mine roof collapsed, exposing multicolored sediments in the rock and creating a huge round rock formation that's said by everyone who sees it to look like the eye of a dragon. Its curved appearance is actually an optical illusion, when you're standing underneath it, the partially collapsed roof is perfectly flat. The roof collapse has made it unsafe for the mine to continue operating, but at least it's given Lancashire a new tourist attraction as compensation. There's no doubt that Robert Smithson of Kareen, Utah, USA, 
was a fantastic earthwork sculptor in the 1970s. But he must be a little shy about the idea of other people seeing his work. Why else would he create a work of art that only becomes visible about once every 30 years? Smithson is the man behind the spiral jetty, an enormous sculpture that can only be seen when the Great Salt Lake is subjected to drought. Perhaps we should view it as an opportunist creation. After all, there has to be a drought happening in the first place for Smithson to go about creating the 1,500-foot-long artificial jetty. He made his sculpture out of black basalt rocks, but you'd struggle to identify them as such now. Years of being submerged below the water has turned the rocks white with salt encrustations, with a touch of pink added by the water itself. Erosion is slowly eating away at the jetty, but not everyone in the area agrees that it ought to be restored. Smithson was apparently inspired by nature's power to wash human creations away, so he'd likely prefer for his work to be reclaimed by nature over time. If you were to go climbing in the Italian mountains, there would be a few things you'd expect to see, and a few things you definitely wouldn't expect to see. A colossal pink rabbit would have to be close to the top of things you wouldn't expect to see and yet, here it is in Artesina. The residents of the town were surprised to wake up one morning in 2005 and find the enormous stuffed rabbit staring back at them from the mountains. Apparently, it was left there overnight by an art collective from Austria without consultation or warning. We'd love to know how they got it there, unobserved. The rabbit is 200 feet long, and even though it's laid on its back, the belly is 20 feet off the ground. The art collective, known as Gelatin, was apparently inspired by the Lilliputians of Gulliver's Travels, dwarfed by the world around them. They wanted to allow visitors to experience that same feeling. The work, apparently known as Haas, was originally expected to stay in situ until 2025, although it's decomposing faster than expected and may have to be taken away sooner. There are many works of culturally significant art in British Columbia, Canada, and upon first inspection, you might think that the Playground of the Gods in Burnaby is among them. Look a little closer, though, and they have a different story to tell. This collection of wooden totem poles might look like the First Nations monuments you'll find elsewhere in the province, but these pieces have a very different origin. Every totem you'll find at the site was designed and built by Toko Naburi, an artist who belongs to the Ainu people of northern Japan. Toko was born in Kushiro, on the island of Hokkaido, which is officially Burnaby's sister city. The artist visited Burnaby in 1985 and went out walking in the mountains. When he found an empty space, he thought was crying out for a little decoration. With the city's permission, he and his son came back and started building totems in 1989, using wood taken from the forests around the mountains. His work was complete in time for the 25th anniversary of the partnership between the cities in 1990. The symbols on the totem celebrate the relationship between humans, animals, nature, and the gods, but most notably, the special friendship between the people of Kushiro and Burnaby. Almost all of us have seen at least one of the Jurassic Park series of movies, but we know these movies are works of fiction. There's no such thing as a real-life dinosaur theme park, right? Actually wrong. There's Dinosaur Fairyland in Xilingol, China. The dinosaurs here are skeletons rather than living, breathing giant lizards that might attack you or your vehicle at any second. But all that says to us is that there's a chance to visit Jurassic Park the safe way. Many of the dinosaurs have been posed to make it appear as if they're breaking down walls, attacking buildings, or guarding eggs. Despite the unique nature and appeal of the park, it receives very few visitors every year. That probably has a lot to do with its location. It's in a very remote part of China on the outskirts of Erlian, Inner Mongolia. During most times of the year, you could visit the park and have the entire place to yourself. We don't know if that makes it more fantastic or more creepy. It's not our place to say what the most beautiful lake in the world is, but we'd have to say that Yuncheng Salt Lake in China has to be among the contenders for the title. Looking at it from above, it would be easy to believe that the lake belongs to another world. 
Its waters take on every shade of the rainbow during warm months and are then covered in crystals for the duration of the winter. In truth, it had a little help to look like this. For hundreds of years, volunteers have shoveled and positioned piles of salt in the lake as the water evaporates around them, leaving giant white salt crystals that get bigger each year and leading to chemical reactions that create the lake's famous vivid shades. It's thought that the practice of harvesting salt from the lake might go back as far as 6,000 years. Ancient temples standing on the lake shores are dedicated to the salt gods, and history tells us that many battles have been fought over ownership of the salt that the lake produces. There isn't as much salt harvesting going on here today, but that doesn't stop visitors from turning up by the thousands. Building a treehouse and playing inside it during your youth can be a lot of fun, but you'd never describe most treehouses as being architecturally significant. The treetop tower of Rügen in Benz, Germany is a little bit different. Rather than being a house built on top of a tree, this is a house for a tree. Right at its center, you'll find a copper beech tree standing 100 feet tall, surrounded on all sides by a spiraling walkway covered in foliage. Right at the top of the structure, available only to those brave enough to climb to it, is a viewing tower that's been nicknamed the Eagle's Nest, offering spectacular panoramic views of the surrounding area. As Rügen is an island known for its stunning natural beauty, that view is well worth seeing. Aside from all the greenery, the structure plays host to a range of different birds, insects, and small animals who might greet you on your way to the top. Local authorities say that the treetop tower will stay here as long as the beech tree does. As the tree is currently around 80 years old, and beech trees usually live for at least 300 years, it ought to be around for a long time to come yet. If we were to ask you whether you would be interested in seeing the world's largest drain, you'd probably say no. After all, how interesting could a drain possibly be? You'd be making a mistake to turn us down, though, because you'd be missing out on the G-Cans project of Kasukabe, Japan, a place that looks more like an underground science fiction metropolis than it does a drain. It took 17 years and $2 billion to build this facility between 1992 and 2009, and it isn't just here to look good. The cavernous drain system with its 150-mile-long tunnels was created to protect the city of Tokyo in case of flooding during monsoon season. Right at the heart of the network, you'll find an 80-foot-tall, 580-foot-long collection tank known as the Underground Temple. Charged with handling the runoff from the city's waterways, at peak output, this drainage system is capable of pumping a monumental 20 tons of water every second. It isn't possible to entirely guard a city against the worst effects of a monsoon, but the G-Cans project will get you pretty close. So long as you can look past the fact that it has a vaguely rude-sounding name, Salina Turda in Romania might be the most incredible theme park in the world. Once upon a time, this place was a traditional Romanian salt mine hidden away in Transylvania, the same place that Bram Stoker imagined Dracula to come from. The history of mining at the site goes back more than 2,000 years, and only ended in 1932. The mine was briefly closed off after that, but it was reopened as a bomb shelter when the Second World War broke out, when local authorities figured out that hiding 400 feet below ground level was a good way to stay safe. Nowadays, it looks more like a cross between a nightclub and something from a science fiction movie. But it's actually a place to come and hang out with friends and enjoy the bowling alleys, pool tables, movie theater, golf course, and Ferris wheel. If that's too much effort for you, book yourself into one of the spa treatment facilities. You'll never unwind in a more unusual environment. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.